Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's second video, doing the extended dropping outlook for today's second video. So, as was on Tuesday, this is your 30 day slash 42 day uh, European outlook. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment, just say that first. The video we see was our 6M UK weather forecast, and we've got a 10 14 day with all our break features coming up straight on this afternoon as well. Please like, share, and subscribe on all of today's videos and content. And thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Thank you so much to eshevwf.int for supply the charts and the data as well, by the way. Thank you so much, EC. Right, going to start off with the, oops, going to start off with the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly. Here we go, Ben. Ah, uh, this is Taylor Street this week, the 29th of April through to the 6th of May. So low pressure going to be in control across western parts of Europe, including the UK, Ireland, France, low countries and Germany. Got some higher pressure up towards Scandinavia and the Nordic regions. I have a little bit of a ridge down towards the far southwest as well. 500 millibar height only shows this up very nicely with above average heights <coughs> to be actually so, so sorry B, to the north and the northeast below average heights low pressure to the south and southwest and again we'd be bringing the wind like the southeast direction so many parts of Europe looking quite mild but not everywhere there are exceptions so let's deal with the cooler and average areas first of all that is particularly through Spain, Portugal, and many parts of France. So, eastern parts of France are a little bit uh, milder as well. Uh, the central part of the Med looking a little bit cool. So, uh, that includes the Balearic Islands of Mallorca, North Ibiza, and potentially Corsica and Sardinia as well. We go further north, so, and we see above average temperatures widely from the UK and Ireland all the way over to the Baltic Sea states of Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania. It does also include southern parts of uh, Sweden and Norway as well as uh, Denmark through here. And those areas, along with Germany, low countries, Poland, those areas are about 3-6 degrees above average. The extreme northeast of Europe is uh, looking uh, a little bit cooler there, particularly northern parts of Finland and into the northwest of Russia. Precipitation shows a lot of regional variations. So, some <coughs> oh dear, a little bit of a tickle tonight. Some parts of Spain, uh, well, I'm recording a video, you're watching it in morning, of course. Some parts of Spain and Portugal looking um, uh, a little bit drier than average, but northern parts of Spain and Portugal are rather on wet side. So France looking very wet, including the Cote d'Azur. Um, no, pretty wet through there. And the low countries, along with many parts of Ireland, certainly England and Wales, anyway, not so much from Scotland. Wetter than average. Also, in the extreme inch from the uh, age asset to the Black Sea, um, we see above average rainfall, but it's not wet everywhere. We find that it's relatively dry across much of the north of the northeast of Europe, again, including uh, Poland and the Baltic Sea states, as well as uh, Scandinavia and also Nordic regions, too. The Mediterranean is showing a bit of a freeway split. So, as I say, some parts of Maine and Portugal are mainly dry. We've got uh, wet conditions through the central part of the Med, again, from Balearics to, um, of course, on Sardinia. Some parts of Italy, drier through there. And Greece, also a little bit drier, but to Turkey could be rather wet. So, lots and lots of regional variation going on for rainfall this week. Week 2 will be the 6th to the 13th of May. Big change for uh, much of Western Europe as this large area of high pressure starts taking over. Something that we've not been able to say for a very long time. So it looks, looks like got a large ridge building there for the second week of May. 500 millibar heights look like that with above average heights, high pressure for the western part of Europe and below average heights over on the eastern side of Europe. So what's doing, what's that doing for temperatures? Ah, well, we get a bit of an east-west split setting up then. So let's put a, a divide. So uh, we've got much of eastern Europe looking cooler than average, including the west of Russia, as well, so the Baltic Sea states and much of Finland are turning cooler than average. We've got Belarus and Ukraine looking cooler than average as well, and then going southwards, Romania and down toward the Balkans, and in fact, in some parts of Greek islands coming out cooler than average through those areas. But in the west of Europe, it's a lot milder. So Spain, Portugal, France, low country, Belgium, Netherlands, and Germany, UK, Ireland, along with Denmark, and some parts of Sweden and Norway, 
all seeing above average temperatures by about 1 to 3 degrees. So mild in the west, cool or warm in the west, and cool, uh, cooler in the east, whether these are anomalies to average. Uh, Precipitation-wise, just drying out, really, across uh, many parts of Europe. So the southeastern corner of the mare from Italy, 3 to Greece, looking a little, a little bit on the wetter side, possibly a bit on the wet side for parts of uh, central northern Norway, Otherwise, it's dry scene, though, or dry scene for us at many parts of Europe, away from Ireland to Portugal in the far west, right way over to western Russia in the east. OK, week three will be the 13th to the 20th of May. So, more changes. High pressure begins to collapse into the southeastern corner of Europe and pulling out into the Atlantic as the top of low pressure starts to dig in again across the north of Europe. The 500 millibar height anomaly shows that the high pressure begins to retrograde again, pulling out into the Atlantic with a trough of low in you know, Scandinavia, and that could well bring the wind into more of a northerly or a northwest. We have got a ridge down here. Through South Beetle parts of Europe, it could start to pull up some quite hot air from Africa, maybe. So, have a look at the temperature anomaly, see how that's looking. Well, north south split this time rather than east west. So, uh, these northern parts of Europe generally looking a little bit on the cool side. That includes, well, England anyway, low countries, northern Germany, Denmark, Scandinavia, Nordic regions, and into Baltic sea states as well. Uh, Northern Poland included with that too. We have uh, cooler and average temperatures. Meanwhile, the southern regions are a lot milder, and that includes the Mediterranean, uh, pretty warm for you there, uh, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece, Turkey, and also the uh, Balkans coming out with above average temperatures. Uh, precipitation wise, we look like that. So, driving average in the southeastern corner around. Uh, Greece and Turkey, and still relatively dry for the UK and Ireland as well, though Spain, Portugal turning wetter than average, and turning wetter than average in the far north of Europe as well, but a weakening signal as ever for week three. Week four will be the 20th to 27th of May, quite a weak signal now, but we've got low pressure in over Scandinavia, and down in this far southeastern corner of ABB, uh, 500 millibar, Heights look like that. So, as I say, it is a weakening signal. A bit of a red should be southern, southeastern area. Possibly some sort of trough through here. Temperature anomalies. Mm, well, most areas are looking at either average or slightly above average. But it's still a little bit on the cool side in the very far north, maybe. And for precipitation. So, very weak signal now. A bit on the dry side in the southeastern corner. And maybe a bit on the wet side in the far north and northwest. Right, that's your 30 days. Okay, done. But let's go through weeks five and six data before we go, because why not? So, week five will be the 27th of May to 3rd of June. Really weak signal now, but possibly some sort of high pressure towards Scandinavia. Otherwise, nothing else to work with. 500 millibar heights, again, suggesting maybe some sort of ridge in the far north. Uh, northern part of Europe. The temperature normally looks generally average or a little bit above in most areas. And precipitation anomaly is very weak, so it could be a bit dry. Uh, a, bit, a bit on the dry side of this far south because it could be a little bit on the wet side in the north where it's too weak a single boat to draw many conclusions. And week six finally will be the third through to 10th of June. Again, very, very uh, weak signal, possibly a bit of a hint of some northern blocking up towards Greenland, which isn't usually a very, a very good sign in the summer. Um, 500 millibar heights, yes, we see some sort of blocking feature up towards Greenland. Could there be a corresponding trough of low pressure that sets up through the north and west Europe? That would be the suspicion, but I'll put in a question mark because it's not evident at that point. Uh, temperature anomalies, anomalies, I should say, average or slightly below, and perhaps showing a bit of a cool down, if anything. And as far as precipitation goes, lastly, it does seem to be a little bit on the wet side here. So, could that be a trough setting up underneath that blocking feature? It's six weeks away. It's, uh, oops, it's not really worth worrying about.
Okay, that's your uh, 30 day European outlook done and dusted for this week. Remember, just a snapshot of what Molly's showing. Could look completely different when we look at it again next week. And we will be focusing on the UK and Ireland on Saturday morning with Miss Molly as well. But the wider European outlook will be, as always, next Tuesday. We're going to be back a little bit later on with your 10 to 14 day. I'll come back for that later for uh, this week's extended European outlook, though. That's all for now. Perfect. So much.